Now, <clears throat> how difficult is it really for a person to make a decision that could affect them for the rest of their lives? Yeah. Now, when I say that, I mean it in the terms where when we are asked to do something that we know that could affect us, but somehow we don't take time out for a fraction of a second in our mind to run that 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 movie theater that 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 camera that 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 futuristic into the future of what can happen to your motherfucking ass if you do make the decision that you're going to fucking make. Yeah, I know it's deep. Now, <clears throat> for me, what I do to keep from making long-term drastic decisions and mistakes in my life, I do what I call the picture take. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> I had been offered some reefer, and the person that offered me the reefer was a person that I used to get my reefer from all the time. I don't no longer get high anymore. I stopped doing it. I had to. I got a job now. Yeah. And <clears throat> Max, here, hit the blunt. Now, what I had to do was I had to go into my movie theater. Yeah, just for a fraction of a second in my mind. And when they offered it to me, and just in that brief moment when I look back at this individual, I was able to see us doing things that I really and truly wanted to do to this motherfucker because the first thing I used to get my reaper from, she looks just like Holly Berry. Oh my God, yeah. God broke the mold on her. And But anyway, and so I made that decision and at that time, I felt good on the decision because in that fraction of a second in my mind, when I looked into that movie theater, it showed us butt naked having a wonderful time. We didn't have no ties to each other. We didn't have to say we love one another. We didn't have to pay rent for each other. We didn't have to do anything. We just was having fun in that fraction of a second of a movie theater that I looked into my mind. Yeah, and the decision that I made was very simple. So I hit the blunt and we had a hell of a time. It was that simple. I know, fellas, yeah, I had to, ladies. That's just how that shit is. I'm pretty sure if you looked in your camera and you saw Denzel Washington offering you some reefer, it's a good possibility he's going to be dicking you the fuck down. That's just how that shit is. And if you don't like a Denzel, it could be a Brad Pitt. If it's not a Brad Pitt, it could be an R. Kelly. Whichever one that it is that you would love to have sex with, and if that happens to be the person that sells reefer to you and it looks like, it's a good possibility you're going to make that same decision that I made. Nothing personal. Now, Three days later, after that incident had took place in my life, <clears throat> I ran into another friend. Yeah. And he said, here, man, try this. I said, what is it? He said, it's heroin. Heroin. Now, <clears throat> in a fraction of a second of my mind, I had to go into my movie theater. Yeah, I did. And when he offered it to me, he said, man, go ahead, man. It ain't going to fuck you up unless you use this shit every day, man. Just use this as a recreational use. <clears throat> So I looks into my movie theater. Now, in a fraction of a second in my mind, in that movie theater, it showed me at the age of 53 to between 53 or maybe 57. I was old as fuck. I wasn't the age I was at the time that I was offered this shit. And I had saw myself in the downtown area in Columbus, Ohio, cleaning windows. Yeah, for 50 cents. And it also revealed to me that one individual did not have 50 cents to give me because I was just running up on people's windows, just cleaning and hoping that they would give me 50 cents, and he didn't have it. So I grabbed his Big Mac and ran, and then my camera came the fuck back on. And so now I'm looking at this individual, and I said, no, I'm cool. I was able to make a rational decision, and I was able to look into my movie theater and see the future if I would have took a hit of that fucking heroin. That motherfucker that I saw in that movie theater, which was me, that would have been me down the line. So I told him no. <laughs> now, I go to church the following Sunday after all this is going on because I'm kind of happy that I was able to be able to stand on my principles and morals and ethics about myself and knowing that there is a future for me other than just being fucked up, beaten, battered, and bruised in fucking life. I don't want to live like that. I've been living like that for a while anyway, so I don't want to continue to live that way. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people understand exactly what I just said. Now, I'm at church, and I see Reverend William get you to me. That's his name. I don't like the motherfucker either. Now, plus, I think he had sex with one of my aunts, but I ain't for sure, but I got an idea which one of my aunts it was. She has a tendency of having children by married men, so I'm thinking it's her, but then again, I could be wrong. I ain't for sure. 
and I'm listening to him go on and on and on and on, and I hear a ruckus in the background I ain't paying attention to because I'm looking at the ministry, looking at this mother, don't fuck with me, and he's looking back at me like saying, don't fuck with me, and we had an agreement, we had that eye contact, y'all know that eye contact, fellas. And in the process of all that, people were getting arrested in this church. Yeah, I'm like, what the fuck is going on? They got child support in this motherfucker, man. Because I got a child support order. But I paid my shit up. But I wasn't really for sure if my payment got in because I had melted from Arkansas. Yeah. And so I ended up getting arrested along with like eight or nine other motherfuckers in this motherfucker's church. And for some strange reason, all of us had the same thing in common. None of us had driver's license. None of us had any ID. And that's a good indication that tells you that that means that none of you niggas had wallets. Yeah, exactly. No wallet means no money. And that means that the reverend ain't getting paid. And according to what he was trying to tell us was that God is very upset with him because he's not getting enough money to give to Jesus. So that's why we got arrested. And we ended up in the Church of Jesus Christ County fucking jail. Now, in the process of me sitting in this county jail with all these other motherfuckers got arrested at this church, one of the deacons pulled out a crack pipe. Yeah, I said, damn, man, what's, what's going on here, deacon? She don't say nothing. You can get it all busted, huh? So I don't say anything out loud. I kept it to myself, and I was wondering, what the hell is this motherfucker doing with that? And he had one of those little glass stems. Now, one end was okay, and the other end was broke. You can kind of stab a motherfucker three or four or five times with it, and you can hurt him pretty bad. And he offered it to me. Here, here it is. Now, I had to run into my movie theater very, very, very quick because this shit was getting out of hand here. And I looked, and in a fraction of a second in my mind, I saw me on top of a table in the county jail <clears throat> singing like Rick James. And I was taking all my clothes off. And somehow at the end of that, I had a motherfucking Jackie Ornessis orange bikini bottom on and so when the camera came to an end I realized I do not want to be this motherfucker here in this county jail and I came to and I said no I don't want it. The moral to it is this it's not very difficult to turn down a decision that can destroy you for the rest of your motherfucking life. Just go into your movie theater and let it take you into the future just far enough where you can get an idea that that's you in that motherfucking movie screen. And guess what? That's a real motherfucking movie. And if you do do what it is going on in that movie, you're going to end up being fucked up. And so that's how I keep from making fucked up decisions and shit, y'all. So I'm headed back to the reefer spot. Yeah, I had a hell of a dream there. Oh, my God. I'm Maxine Alexander, and that's just how I, myself, personally keep from making fucked up decisions in my life. Just go into your movie theater. I can guarantee it'll show you the future, and if you go against it, then you're going to fuck up and be like that motherfucker you see in the movie theater in your own mind. I know it's deep. I'm out. Peace.